All right, welcome back to chapter 10. In the second video, we're going to look at the cell cycle and mitosis. The cell cycle looks at the series of events in order during the life of a cell. And there are two major components of the cell cycle, including interphase, which takes up most of the cell cycle, and mitosis. If I look at interphase, there are three subcomponents, including the first gap, or a growth phase, the S phase, which is when DNA is replicated, the chromosomes are copied, and then the second gap, which is more growth and preparation for mitosis. Mitosis is when we divide the nucleus and the division of the cytoplasm comes right after, and we call that cytokinesis. The same thing is shown here, except it's a little easier to see all of the steps of interphase. And this is again normal growth and preparation for cell division and then mitosis. So in some books you'll see mitosis includes both the division of the DNA and the cytoplasm which is cytokinesis and others they might have cytokinesis separated out as its own segment of the cell cycle. Let's look at those subphases or subcomponents of interphase. G1 or the first gap or gap 1 is when the cell is growing and getting ready to replicate DNA. So the cell changes aren't really evident, but the cell is active and getting ready to replicate their chromosomes. S phase is when DNA synthesis occurs. That's where the S comes from. And this is when we're making identical copies of the DNA in order to split them in half during mitosis. So what this is going to look like is your chromosomes, we remember we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or a total of 46. Each of those 46 chromosomes looks like this before replication. So if this is before S phase, after S phase, each chromosome will make an identical copy of itself and attach the identical copy at the center, at a structure called the centromere. These identical copies are called sister chromatids. So again, this side, this is one copy on the left, and the identical copy is on the right. Centrosomes, we're going to see later, are structures in the cell made of microtubules that will ultimately line up these chromosomes and split them in half so that the identical copies separate in the two, into the two new cells. And we'll see that centrosomes are present in animal cells, but not present in things like plant cells and some other organisms. Finally, in the second gap, we will replenish the energy that was used up during DNA synthesis. The organelles will also reproduce things like mitochondria, ribosomes, etc. And the cytoskeleton will break down to get ready for cell division. The mitotic phase of the cell cycle includes mitosis, which is nuclear division, so division of all those chromosomes inside the nucleus, and this is also called karyokinesis. Karyo refers to the nucleus, and this is really movement or division of the nucleus. And then cytokinesis, which is movement or division of the cytoplasm. So I can see some of this in the plant cell shown here. We're going to see something like this in the lab. I can see when the cell is not dividing, it's pretty easy to see the nucleus. And then when the cell is in the stages of mitosis, such as here and here, the nuclear envelope seems to break down or disappear. And then during cytokinesis, what's happening is the division of the cytoplasm. So everything in the yellow part of the cell here has to be replicated and then separated into the two new daughter cells. Let's look in more detail of the individual stages of mitosis. Remember that the second gap precedes mitosis, and by the end of gap 2, or G2 of interphase, we see that we have duplicated our centrosome already. Here is one pair of centrioles, and it's duplicated, so now I have two pairs of centrioles. And then I know my chromosomes have already been replicated because that happened in the previous step of interphase that came before G2. 
When G2 is complete, the cell begins mitosis, and there are four general phases of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Just like people take the GMAT or the MCAT or the LSAT when they want to go to some kind of uh, graduate school, mitosis, I remember PMAT to remember the phases. So the first phase is my, excuse me, of mitosis is prophase. And in prophase, we have the nuclear envelope breaking down. So I can see only fragments as where compared to the previous step where it's complete. So the nuclear envelope begins to break down. And this is also where I see chromosomes condense. Remember earlier, I see chromatin. And now I can see distinct chromosomes in prophase. I also see spindle fibers starting to come out of those centrosomes. And the centrosomes start to migrate to opposite poles of the cell. They're going to be found on opposite ends of the cell. The next phase is between prophase and metaphase, and we call that prometaphase because it's kind of in between the two. So here what's happening is chromosomes continue to condense further, and they're easier to see in the microscope. It's hard to see in this picture, but on the chromosomes near the, let me draw one right here. So if I have a centromere here, we're going to have structures starting to form called kinetochores. So I'm going to draw them in green here. Kinetochores are going to start to form, and microtubules coming out from the centrosome that attached to these kinetochores are going to be called kinetochore microtubules, and they will work to align the chromosomes in their proper location. Some of the microtubules coming out from the centrioles do not bind to any of the chromosomes, and their job will be to elongate the cell, to make the cell stretch out and get bigger. All right, so we had prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So now we're on metaphase. And in metaphase, we have the chromosomes line up in the equator of the cell. And sometimes we call this the metaphase plate of the cell. So chromosomes are going to be lined up in the middle of the cell, where each of the sister chromatids are on one side of that metaphase plate. So if I had the plate like this, it would be like this. They have to be on opposite sides because ultimately they're going to get pulled apart to the two new cells. And they're aligned again by those spindle fibers that came out of the centrosome. In anaphase, those sister chromatids will be pulled apart. So here, sister chromatids are separated. So now each chromatid is, we call them chromosomes. Remember, this was one chromosome, and this was one chromosome plus copy. So after anaphase, this chromosome is going to end up on one cell, and this one's going to end up inside the other cell. Telophase, or telophase, happens when the chromosomes are at the opposite ends. And we see what happens is the opposite of prophase, essentially. The chromosomes will start decondensing, so you cannot see them as well. And the nuclear envelope will start to reassemble and surround those chromosomes, which is going to unravel and become chromatin again. The spindles also break down. And after telophase, we have cytokinesis, which is separation of the cytoplasm. In many cells, these two phases are combined together. And really, in the cell, the, there is not really any pause in between the four phases of mitosis, or these five phases, if I talk about prometaphase in here. The cell just goes through all of these phases, and we separate them into distinct phases to make it easier to talk about what's happening during each step. So in the next few slides, I'm going to go through these phases of mitosis again, but talk about the bullet points, the details of what's happening in each phase. So again, in prophase, the nuclear envelope breaks down. You can't see it that well anymore. 
Organelles are going to start moving to the opposite ends of the cell, getting ready for the cell to split. The nucleolus, you can see, is missing. It disappears during this phase. Those centrosomes migrate to the opposite ends of the cell. Microtubules are forming, and I can see them coming out of the centromeres. And then sister chromatids are coiling tighter. They're condensing, and they're aided by condensin proteins. In prometaphase, the steps that started in prophase continue. We see the envelope, the nuclear envelope, continue to break down until it's completely gone. The mitotic spindles continue to lengthen and move towards the chromosomes. I mentioned earlier that kinetochores form on top of these centromere structures. And the mitotic spindles, those microtubules coming out from the centro, centrosomes, will attach to the kinetochores. In metaphase, all of the chromosomes line up on that metaphase plate. Sometimes it's called the equatorial plane or the equator. And you can also say that it's the sister chromatids that line up. And they're still stuck together. So I draw them like this, but in reality, they're really kind of really close together like this. I just draw them as an X shape because it's easier to see the two structures, the two sister chromatids. In reality, there are proteins called cohesin proteins that keep them stuck together. I'll use the different color to connect them. So these would be the cohesin proteins that keep them together. And if this were a human cell, a somatic body cell, all 46 of them would be lined up in the middle. So this would be like chromosome number one, two, three, four. It doesn't have to be in order because this is a three-dimensional kind of uh, spherical cell all the way to 46. Don't worry about all the stuff that's going on in this picture over here, but I just wanted to show you an example of what the sister, sister chromatids would look like. So this would be a sister chromatid. Here's another one. They're identical and they're attached together. And the cohesin proteins are holding them together. In metaphase, you can see they're starting to split apart, but they're still held together in the middle. In anaphase, the next step, we're going to see the sister chromatids being pulled apart, and the cohesin proteins have to be removed before that step. Here's another look at metaphase using a picture from our textbook. I like this one because I can see more of the three-dimensional shape of the cell. Here's my metaphase, uh, metaphase plate. It's imaginary, so there's no real plate in the cell, but I can see that all the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. And I know that each of the sister chromatids is on one side or the other side of the cell. And they're going to be pulled apart in the next step. Remember that some of these overlapping microtubules will be their purpose is to push or elongate the cell. So in anaphase, those cohesin proteins that we're holding together, the sister chromatids will be degenerated. And the sister chromatids will be separated. And I can see that happening here, as well as in this cell, left and right. They're gonna to move toward the centrosomes where the microtubules were attached to them. And then the cell will also elongate during this period of time. In telophase or telophase, the chromosomes will decondense once they reach the opposite ends of the cell and the nuclear envelope reforms. So this is essentially the opposite of prophase. We also see that the spindle fibers depolymerize, they broke down, and they break back in, into their tubulin monomers. Remember, microtubules were made of tubulin proteins. These are gonna be recycled to form cytoskeletal elements of these future daughter cells. And then also at the same time when the nuclear envelope is reforming for each of the future cells, we're also going to see nucleosomes. Remember those beads on a string, the histones and DNA wrapped around them. We'll start appearing them, uh, appearing within the nuclei. And then you'll see that the chromosomes will ultimately decondense to form chromatin once again. Finally, cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm. We're going to divide everything else that was in the cytoplasm approximately in half. In some cases, cells will 
go through mitosis, but not go through cytokinesis. If that happens, you create multinucleated cells. Multinucleated. And this happens, for example, in our skeletal muscle cells, the muscles that allow you to move, like the muscles in your arm. And I can see a few nuclei here. So in multinucleated cells, mitosis happened, but cytokinesis did not. So one thing to note is cytokinesis is very different when we look at animal cells compared to plant cells. And the main reason for this is because animal cells, like our cells, human cells, we don't have a cell wall. We have no cell wall. But plants do have a cell wall. So for them, when they're going through cytokinesis, they also have to build that new cell wall in between the two daughter cells. So let's look at animal cells first. In animal cells, cytokinesis usually happens around uh, the end of anaphase or with telophase and involves actin filaments. Remember, these were part of the microfilaments that were in the cytoskeleton. So actin proteins will accumulate in the middle, right here, of the two cells in a region we call the cleavage furrow. So actin filaments will form a ring we call it a contractile ring. And when this ring gets more and more tightened, it creates that little indentation we call the cleavage furrow. And it cinches kind of like a belt. So if you tighten the belt all the way, eventually the cells get cleaved into two daughter cells. In contrast, in plant cells, we have to form a new wall, a new cell wall between the daughter cells. So what happens is during the cell cycle really interface, the Golgi apparatus of plant cells makes a bunch of vesicles full of enzymes and proteins and sugars that will spread out through the cell. And during telophase, right before, cyto, uh, before cyto, uh, cytokinesis, what's going to happen is those vesicles move towards the center of the cell. And they will fuse together and ultimately form a structure that's the precursor to the cell wall called the cell plate. So more and more of these vesicles will fuse together until they form the new cell wall. So there's one phase I did not talk about in interphase that also happens for some cells called the G0 phase, the gap zero phase. And cells go into the gap zero phase when they're not actively getting ready to divide. This is also sometimes called the inactive stage or the quiescent stage. For some cells, this is temporary. You know, they're not dividing right now. They don't want to use a lot of resources. It's almost like going into hibernation for, a, for some time. And this can be, cut, be due to the environment. Maybe there's not enough food or nutrients. Maybe there are no growth factors in the environment at the time. But then eventually they will exit the gap zero phase and return to gap one. And again, this can be due to growth factors or more food available, more space available, etc. In some cells, the gap zero phase is permanent. So these, this is true if you have a cell type that rarely or perhaps even never divides. And that's true for mature heart cells and some or many types of nerve cells. That's why heart attacks and nerve damage can be so detrimental because these cells generally do not divide. That takes us to the end of our second video. In our third and final video for chapter 10, we're gonna look at the regulation of the cell cycle, including checkpoints. And we're also gonna look at cancer cells and what's happening when the cell divides uncontrollably.